Oh boy. Mm. They're picking up some very important heroes now very early into the draft. And I mean Rubik Instant. is the yeah. best response you could go for against this Enigma because the best thing about an Enigma is not just having the black hole, but it's the threatening capability of having a black hole. And then Rubik having the ability to steal it is a big negation to Enigma ever using the ability. Well, and here's we've also seen kind of eke in through is we haven't seen any void spirit contention. We haven't seen the puck. I, we finally saw the puck band. And I think the cut are definitely setting themselves up for that void spirit pick on little Nick. And I wonder what Arakash should, because they should definitely be preempting that pick, what they're going to pick here to kind of counter that. Because I think with the heroes they have, they could still go for the tusk. They could do, tusk. yep, there we go. Pairs well with Weaver. It's more physical damage, especially for the Roche, but I still think you just go for the Void Spirit now, and that puts a big wrench in the works for Arkosh Gaming, because you're not that super lockdown team anymore. Ten seconds remaining. I mean... Five seconds remaining. I, just, I mean, I feel like you're, you're pretty much hitting the nail on the head, but uh, they actually take the Wraith King instead. I feel like this is uh, more of one of their kind of insurance picks. It's good against the Enigma because if reincarnation is still up in Enigma Black Holes, then you've got the run up. If here's the here's the other best part. If Wraith King dies and he goes reincarn and the black hole is still there and then Rubik is out in the middle of nowhere, Rubik steals black hole, turns it around, reincarn profit. Well, in SMD, I mean, in the group stages, in the NADPC, in the uh, in their division, this this is what they picked. They picked him, Wraith King, first phase. Every single time, teams were first phase banning it versus them. It's a complete comfort pick. And we saw in the previous game as well, the Weaver versus Wraith King matchup, where while Weaver can't, or uh, while Wraith King can't touch Weaver, if the other heroes on his team allow him to, then Weaver just gets chunked because Weaver doesn't have the best armor for an Agi hero. And Wraith King is just pure damage as well as the matchup into the Enigma where you don't want to be blowing your, your black hole on him because he's just going to come back. You need to have all alternative damage to take him down the Go first time around. Back. But it, it's a very, very safe pick for the cut. And it makes their, their lineups very, very well-rounded right now. But yeah, Void Spirit ban. They take it out. They don't want to deal with it. They take out the monkey. So, I mean, this all steers me towards Little Nick Batrider. I feel like that's the, the next in line, at least uh, as history dictates. I mean, it's it's good against the Enigma. It's another sort of stun lock-esque hero for the Weaver. And, I mean, whatever Arkosh might have planned as their last pick is, uh, I mean, Batrider is usually still something pretty good against that. That being the only downside is, is that you'd be... First, you'd be second to last picking your mid bat into a possible counter, because usually you like to see that bat rider as the last overall pick, because then it's completely uncontested. But Arkosh will have the the opportunity to kind of deal with the potential of that being the last pick bat. In addition to that, I I think a part of me also thinks that they might be wanting Radio to roll out the tiny. Pick. Maybe with the Ember Spirit Band, that'll be enough Radio for them to say it's time. Invoker. Invoker. Okay. All right. Well, that's. I guess it's another sort of deny for the Enigma Black Hole overall. Because it's just, it's, you'll have the Tornado to work with, the Cold Snap to follow up, and I mean, if Arkosh is ever fleeing a battle, it's just going to be a meatball. And it's definitely not as strong as I would have said, like like the, the Void Spirit most likely would have been, but I was really surprised they don't go for the Tiny. I'm guessing, I guess they just don't want to have to deal with the Enigma. They want to have a hero that can boost up the Wraith King even more. I mean, we, we've we seen uh, some pretty beefy carries get alacritied, uh, especially in the four Zoomers game. I mean, they, they hit like a truck, but I, I'm not I'm not entirely sold on this Invoker, especially with Tusk in the game. Tusk is one of the, uh, the classic heroes to grief Invoker's mid, just getting the shards block off and just killing them with the, the other mid laner. But now Arkosh, they need to figure out what they want because a lot of heroes are banned. They could still go for the... No, I guess can't go for the Storm Spirit. That's banned off already. Hmm. I mean, it's a mid that they're looking at, right? The puck is yeah. banned. I wasn't going to say the puck might be in the pool, but it's not. And it's Juggernaut. It's you may now select your heroes. Okay. Weaver mid? Yeah, I think it's Weaver mid then. Yep. Yeah, because you can't run a Jug against Invoker ever. 
in any frame of lifetime. Well, this isn't the worst, but I feel like Nick's going to have a field day. If he goes Quas Wex, I mean, anytime Weaver is without mana, it's always really, really scary for him to just exist. I mean, he's really good at getting runes. That's the one upside, but I don't know. I, I am sold on this Jug here, though. Jug is one of the strongest heroes in the patch. It wanes incredibly well into Tide. It's one of the few heroes that wanes well into Tide, and, and that's a very, very short list. But I don't, I, I'm, I'm skeptical. I'm very skeptical. Was Slark banned? Uh, I don't believe so. Hmm. But I'm guessing, even if they pick Slark last, you're still saying that Weaver mid. Right. I mean, there was no real way to avoid it with the uh, with the overall picks and how they had the like, draft around because it's just, there wasn't really a good mid pick that was going to be able to suit because the puck was banned out. The Lesh was already banned as well. You, people don't run mid Lena anymore. That's not a thing. Well, people don't run Lena in general. Pardon. <laughs> but both these teams, I mean, they've gotten incredibly strong heroes. I mean, the first series of the day we talked a lot about team fight versus succeeding in a lot of these lanes. And I think for the first time, we've got a pretty 50-50 draft like ideology this time around because everybody need they both teams need items both teams have sort of these fight biggest uh cooldown is like black hole ravage right yeah, and that's, that's going to be the 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 big contestion that's their big team fight overall i mean freezing field does damage but it's not as big as just dropping the uh the ravage into the black hole but we did lose Jug. <laughs> yeah, this is actually the first um, beginning game pause we've had uh, for both today and yesterday. Mm -hmm. I jumped over to the Tide build. And uh, he's going to go for the, uh, the armor negation build. He's already got the phase boots. Yep. Yeah, he's going phase boots into the medallion. We saw it I is believe, quite strong. Yeah, I think Snake. On Snaking. Well, yeah, Snaking runs everything, though. Remember, he ran Desolator. That is true. He did get away with Desolator, though. I, the, that game was a fever dream. That... <laughs> but I hope that this, this is the first game... I mean, I, I hate Coddle. I hate what Coddle does and what Coddle allows, but... I hope for once this Coddle is actually going to be able to exist because in the previous games we just see him get run at and die and it's not fun to play Coddle when you're one in eight. It's fun to play Coddle when you've got, you know, more net worth than your offlaner and you've got 200 last hits. More than... Yeah, so the, the wrong way is what you're mm -hmm. saying. Mm -hmm. that, that's, the pub, that's the pub mindset of a Keeper of the Light. Well, that is the pub mindset of Keeper. Those but at fair, the same I mean, time, that is had the fun version of playing him. Well, at the same time, I feel like SMD, you're, you're just always going to have a slightly worse time versus the Enigma. Enigma is always going to be just this annoying hero. He's just going to take away your creeps. But if he's ever able to right click Eidolons, I mean, that, that is a reason why this Keeper of the Light is kind of decent versus the Enigma. You're just always able to illuminate, right click him down. You, they never really get to split, I think, very cleanly. There's always some contestion, but then it's all going to be all up to Crow to be able to find this Keeper of the Light and be the, the Pamplona of, of the previous game. Oh, look at the map. Oh, I was Oh, I wasn't paying attention to that. Why did you draw attention to it? Now chat's going to look at it. Yeah, I looked at it. Oh. <laughs> uh. See, I never actually look at that kind of... I never look at the minimap when it comes to those kind of things. Most of the time when it does, it's mostly me drawing. It was very quick. It was very succinct. It was very well planned. They were they were ready for that one. All right, so from I what I understand... I think it was led by a goat. The uh, mm -hmm. chat really likes it if we meme a lot in an Oh, there we go. Game. Yep, there. Again? Okay, yep, I saw that one. Round two, and if you guys actually noticed, Gremel had the smallest one. <laughs> do what you will with that information <laughs> oh that's funny we'll see if we get another one but they might actually have to play the video game 
I mean, it you looks say like that. They are four man packed up outside this Roche pit. I mean, looking at their spells, Maiden's not specced eh. anything yet. Got spin on the jug, which is standard, and Tusk is yet to get shards or tagged. The battle begins. So it looks like they're just going to confirm wonder... runes. I feel like maybe Crow is just going to stay up here, try to get no, a first blood mid. baby onto Vol. It is jug mid. Yeah. Well, oh, wow. Hmm. Okay. I don't know how I feel about this one, Chief. Well, I mean, I, that's that was my big concern with the the Weaver is just you're going to lose your mana. Will Nick is going to steal everything, and I wonder if Nick's going to change his uh, change over to QE because now he's got a relatively free lane versus Jug. So say that as he gets denied, but we're starting as a try in the top lane. Uh, it looks like they're trying to kill Rubick or maybe a Tingle. Yeah, oh, they saw like him gush. Might be the one here. They get the tag team yeah. out with the ag extra damage coming out, and Arkosh will actually claim first blood. Crow, the power of tag team. You can't underestimate the tusk. Yeah, really well played from Crow. They had no idea where he was. Didn't show on the runes. Didn't show anywhere. And uh, very patient. And it's it's normal for tides to get gush nowadays, level one. But it's uh, they see it and they just jump on it. It's a good play all around from uh, from Arkosh for one second. And I, I saw the, the predictions go up. I'm pretty sure it's 250k channel points in favor of Arkosh. Okay. Let's see if the cuck can bankrupt some uh, <laughs> yeah. some Twitch fiends. And it looks like Nick will be opting for the uh, for the annoying build. For the Mana Steel build. Because it is really good in this game specifically as well. But... I know playing Invoker versus Tusk is always something you need to be uh, cautious of. And now that there is a Jug, I mean, just getting spawned on it, it is pretty annoying if the Tusk ever makes his way over. Tag Team Slow is uh, really an issue, but Gremlin is going to have a pretty free time in the bot lane. Aside from his uh, idol ends getting kicked. I mean, that's just how it's going to go. But the best part about it is that he's just denying your ranged every time. So it's a great deny of XP. And Crow wants to make plays onto Pengu, but it it's really going to be so important. They've got a ward to scout him out, which is something uh the previous uh oh. previous game they really made sure to get. But I mean, he's just going to tag him and click him up a little bit. But there's not as much kill potential in this lane in comparison. The Enigma Eidolons don't get the tag team anymore, so it's not to can't just run Eidolons and tag team somebody. Yeah, no more Necro Tusk. Oh, or actually, man. no. He, his work, or his yeah, his still work with it, but uh, but I don't think you want to run a Necro Tusk. Like if he's positioned for Tusk, it's not gonna happen. Off lane Tusk, maybe. Maybe. But uh, it is just gonna be a free time for Gremlo. Pingu's trying to make his life uh, life hard by just trying to nuke out the idol lines whenever he can, while trying not to grief SMDs creeps too much. But with the Tusk mid, I mean, he out level two. This is what I was worried about. Yeah, they roll in on the Nick. But with no sentry or reveal just early, they're not going to be able to get this kill onto him. And, I mean, Nick's got a lot of regen to work with, too. Sitting on a fairy fire as well. And, uh, actually, I was going to say a CS might be fine, but it's 16 and 5 to the 7 and 1. Well, and that's the reason I thought he was going to switch it up and go for QE, because that that is the problem. Jug, while he does have slightly lower base damage than you, he's got a much better animation, and he's got a quelling blade. So aside from Tornado CS, uh, he's pulling away a little bit. Cole, in trouble actually, yeah. Arkosh, find a second pick. And, that's a cold, hard fact. and this is the worst case scenario in the top lane, where now the wave is pushing into your tower, the Weaver's going to have absolute free farm, and the large camp is blocked up by Arkosh, so they're just stuck here. He's going to be in the trees up until ANA gets back, and in all of this space, because of this Enigma pick, it feels like just allows Crow to prowl upon the map. He's trying to find Nick. Getting a little bit of a misplay, but four minute runes. Practically uncontested. However, neither of these heroes are bottle carriers, so it's not the end of the world. It well, just I feels mean... like they need more levels on the cut before they can really make any plays. Yeah, I'm not mean, saying I... they're they're discontent farming, but they, they just need some time. Yeah, I mean you want some more time in the lift. Actually, I don't think you go for lift early still. Yeah, it looks like yeah, still you still want Arcane specs. Supremacy. What is it? 1-3-1 one, one, or is it 1-2-2? Two, two? Uh, I think 1-3-1. One, one, one. 
Okay, that's what I thought. I mean, you Ooh. can see just how much damage it does to Pale Horse there, just having two in and alone. And that's what I was talking about, is that uh, Anchor Smash is not an undervalued spell against any of the safe lane cores you could ever run. And Weaver likes to get on top of it. And it was like you were talking about last game with Dazzle. Oh, Every time he just gets on, on the creep wave. Oh, Vol might be in trouble as well. Bro is he's got two spells. At him and he's just he's burning away here. The tag team damage extra as well. Pale Horse. It's like a couple shots from the tower here. But uh, this top lane already going quite fruitful. And the bounty runes being uncontested as well. This will come in here. And it's a risk that's absolutely paid off. Because usually you'd want this Weaver to get as much soul XP as possible he's about to pop his level five but sticking up in this trial lane they've just been able to get some really cheeky kills i think what two on vol yeah two on vol one on to single king but now that he's level five on weaver he's got to doesn't need to be too afraid but single king's just going to keep gushing oh. i mean he'll keep gushing he'll keep anchor smashing he'll lift oh. them in and this is another smash that will confirm the kill so he was level five and he had that safety net but it was just can't get you praise like a guy, that. praise a guy, and he fails you uh, within 15 seconds. You know? Aster cursed. What? No. But uh, <laughs> it was a, uh, it, it was unfortunate. It was a good play, and that's something that's uh, you just need to have. You need to have the sentry in lane, and you, plays like that just happen. The weaver, the weaver never sees it coming. Is th this isn't. Is this actually the normal strat? You get four oh, sages go. masks on Gremlo. Oh, top yep. lane. Ec oh. There we go. Rune on Canis, and it's actually two. Nick. TP in and he does Nick. have spin, oh, beautiful though. beautiful shards. Blocks him off completely there. The only one that might be in trouble now is Crow, but uh, he's got Snowball up. He needs to uh, escape. But yes, you get the uh, the four Sages masks. Uh, I, I don't... I think the four is a stylistic thing, but you definitely get three just... Or uh, two, just so that way you do have... Uh, the Necronomicon. The Necro... Yeah, it's all for the Necro, but... Yeah, or, I on it. Uh, like, what goes into this? I mean, Falcon Blade, Medallion. Maybe he's done the math. You know, Earn? it's a 160 mana. Uh, he's got 5.1 right now with CM. Maybe, maybe, maybe this is some uh, some research strat. Maybe he has infinite okay. mana. Well, you know, or or you know what? Uh, Enigma is purple, and Sage's masks are purple. He only has one face though. But he has three Eidolons. He summons. That is true. So he he might be giving them out. for each one. Unless they summon the extra ones, then he needs even more. That's true. We might see uh, more picked up later. I'd love uh, to see an eight-game Sage Mask game. <laughs> well, one, you know, a couple in the backpack just for spares. But unfortunately, Nick rotated bottom and wasn't able to find anything. Well, on now, the this game's kind of slowing down. Yeah, on the bright side, they didn't rotate top. With that uh, extra time, I say that though, actually, the Tusk is coming top. Crow does have Mach 2, uh, level 2 tag team, and Tingle King is 6. He did spec the Ravage. The Courier about to get clipped. Ooh, he's got there it. There it goes. The swift, the spores. And it makes sense, they want to keep the focus oh, on the top lane. Yeah, Whoa. he's in trouble here. Rest of uh, the cut Here's are Nick here. again. They do have the stun with the Ravage follow up Good immediately. Good Ravage. They will find this kill, at least on one. Bull might be in trouble here as Pale Horse is trying to get him, but he has to reset if he wants to live. So we'll confirm Crow, but Bull will die to both. Just barely. And I was just saying, they want to keep this focus top. They don't want to involve the uh, Enigma at this point in the game, but I think they got a little bit cocky there. They played into Ravage a little bit too easily in the good rotation from Nick. I mean, Jug is running away a little bit. Jug is literally just... So he's farming. He's playing like, as if he's like a TA or something, but I, I don't know if I'm sold. He's got a Battle Fury queued up. He is going to be very farmed, and he's got a good start, but I don't know if I, I really believe in this Jug just Ice yet. Shards. Oh. Well, he tried. Well, he, they want to keep going on it. They got him. Omni is available, and he opens with the Omni. The tag team is actually not in range for the first bit of it. Oh, no. The backslash coming in. Like, he actually jumps back to the side blade with the creeps. He made well, it to the small camp. Perfectly. He does have oh, he's run into the CM, though. Oh, uh, yeah, he's rooted up. He's dead. Wasn't I thought maybe he could have... Uh, I thought maybe he could have broke to the left, and then it would have been a little bit harder for the CM to catch up, but may maybe he was just on borrowed time there. Borrowed time. Well, 
looking at the rest of the net worth of this game though like we're talking about jug he's gotten some pretty uncontested farms sitting at 3.9 but jumping over to smd i mean he's sitting uh at a very high precipice of uh, 4.2k and he's gonna go for the radiance build and yeah makes complete sense he just wants to be that ultra farmer because i don't know on arkosh i'm watching pale horse he's got a bottle and he's just kind of making these plays where he's just trying to get anything he did steal it but he's not going to be the the farmer he doesn't really have that time in this game he's getting right click oh, i was going to say he gets spun on um, Jonas Volpus will come in there they got the spin but with the little nick poisoning where he is on the top not going to go for that one radiance bottom tower yeah just absolute respect don't want to be caught uh caught without any mana and without spin versus that invoker but that's the only issue with Arkosh draft right now. It's so greedy. They are able to get this tower, I think, with the Necro spawn up. But it's just so greedy that I don't know if this Weaver is going to be the Weaver that we typically see. We see he doesn't have any components, I don't think, of his Maelstrom yet. Oh, no, he's got a Javelin flying out. So it's not too bad, but he's going to need to get a little bit more active in this game, I think, to uh, to keep up with the farm. Well, the activity might be in the form of rotating on to Nick and at least clipping his courier. It was going to result in a team fight. Countess Volpus is trying to take down Single King, though, but Tidehunter is not exactly a good uh, person to trade clicks on. But looks like they lost their bot the tower, but yeah. I mean, Scourge is not strong. He uh, hasn't had the greatest time. He's, you know, he's missing one creep from every wave. We're not seeing the, uh, the same Wraith King we saw in the previous game, but he's got to be careful. If Pale Horse ever gets stunned, he can really get chained down. Mm -hmm. Oh, bot lane. Lucy oh, Nick. Nick is going to go for Gremlo here. Black Hole is available, but losing all of his mana to that EMP and getting body blocked by Vol. They will get the kill. Actually, oh, and Nick. Gucci and Nick going for another, but actually he's going to be the one in trouble here. Gets picked off by Crow. He just walked the wrong way and Crow just, he threaded the needle. Oh, I don't even but... know if they get Crow. It's a little bit hard. I mean, have he's got him, Snowball in 8, and there's no shards available. And with Sakuchi on Vol, it feels like it's a it's a well and given that they'll be able to get this kill if Vol just Sakuchi's into him. But good shards will snowball. slow down. Oh, okay. With no Snowball for Latch, they'll let it go as well. Still trading one for one, though. I mean, you get the Invoker kill. A Soul kill as well. I mean, he's extremely happy. He got almost a level and a half off that. But giving Vol is Kikuchi, it's always going to be something annoying. It's just so strong. Aside from that, though, I mean, it's Spin, Skikuchi, and Black Hole. Otherwise, this Rubik is really just meant to lift the the Weaver, I feel like. He really doesn't have a, too much of a, a use in this game. There's no Fisher to really steal. There's uh, no big spells. It's just kind of nice and convenient. In that regard, I think we're really going to be seeing Pingu, who's going to need to pick up the slack, but Call is definitely uh, adept at that. Well, there's not really any organized plays being made around the map. Everybody's just farming. Yeah, that's... I mean, with no... Well, I wasn't going to say with no Ravage up, it feels like it's just going to be that, that kind of wait and play, but now Ravage is up, but they don't want to be making these fights because Arkosh is actually ahead. And they're about oh, to wrap on the Nick, Nick here. Taking quite a bit of damage. Goat is going to dodge the NATO, but unfortunately with the uh, the slowest moving hero in the game, not really able to catch up to get the root. And maybe with Tingle? Oh, Tingle in the mid. You're right. They do have the Snowball, but... With Vol there in the TP oh. rotation, they will drop a Ravage, but Canis Volpus spinning just in time. Uh. <laughs> oh, I love it. I was expecting nope. BM to... Oh, no, no. 1335 Ravage. You know, they're, they're saying what I'm, uh, you know, internally monologuing, but uh, can't say that. Uh, but they're making a play on Gremlo, and this is, uh, this is the weak hero that if they find him... Is a big pick. Oh, they're, they're all breaking. Them. I mean, they break these Eidolons, but it looks like Pingu is actually going to go down to Eidolon um, damage Kim alone. Yeah, they he's will black, black hole. hole, actually, and this might find the kill on Tingle as well. Yep, just in time. Necronomicon creeps will confirm it. And since Vol actually stole the uh, Midnight oh, and, Crow. and there's the Snowball, there's still a Necronomicon creep alive too, so there's a plenty of damage available. 1335 Ravage. 14, 14 black hole, apparently. <laughs> yeah. That was right before that, too. 
Uh. And I mean, it's just, he made the best of a pretty bad situation. All three heroes died bottom, and I don't, I'm struggling to figure out that it feels like they're just waiting for the Radiance. I mean, they're getting a Midas on Nick, pretty standard, but nobody's having too great of a game on the cut right now. It's really just Tingle King, and he's trying to, to make these rotations, but well, his rotation will we'll get a be lightly fruitful. I mean, 244 gold for a Maiden, actually, that's uh, some good muns. Weaver. Well, usually we'd see these teams grouping up on the towers or on the carts, but instead, uh, the, they're really just opting to farm. It's really been Arkosh that had been taking a more active role, but, I mean, you've got a Battle Fury Jug farming. You're, you're completely okay, as long as they can defend this mid-tower as long as possible, that they really don't mind anything that's going on. Weaver's actually stealing an Ancient stack. I mean, what are you going to do? There's no contest. You've got all this dire vision as well, so you know there's nobody here. They're just, they're lining up to try to get towers. And SMD's going to walk on it, but... <laughs> yep, there it is. SMD's like... Oh, oh this is what they need to go. do. Gremlin's a little bit too far up. Yeah, it looks like he's going to get jumped on here. With the the jug is already here. I mean, jug can't really help a turn around here, especially getting hit with that blinding. Like they need to be careful. The supports are incoming. They see Tingle King. Ravage in one, though. I mean, they got to play it right. There's the Ravage oh. response immediately, though. They will find two, and the Jug is nowhere to be seen. They will kill off Goat, and eventually Crow will fall as well. Hmm. No 16-13 Ravage. I guess they felt a little bit worse about that one, but... Yeah, Same thing, it. though. I, I want more alt chat, man. Like, every time I watch an Arkosh game... They say so much stuff in the all chat, and now we're casting it, and I'm like, come on. Yeah, it's, Where is yeah, it? You, you, <laughs> I want to react the, the to it. The pokes. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, they're they're pretty happy, I think, with that exchange. So, well, you know, you're trading two supports for Ravage. Tingle King kind of needed to, to do something like that just to progress the game forward. I mean, he's been very active. He's been part of all but one kill, but... The hard part is they need to weed out this Weaver. I think they need to really t retake over their jungle. I mean, Scourge knows what's going on. He just needs to uh, get a little bit more organized and maybe take him out. But he's got that Sanja. Look, he's just literally farming in front. He just stole the big one. <laughs> Sorry, I was watching the Jug down bottom. It felt like there might have been a little bit of a fight going on there because uh, Camus Vulpus is standing on top of Bull who steals all of his gold. But you're right, the Jug is practically free farming. And there's not much they can really do about this Weaver on top of that. Like, you could see him just freely taking stacks. Like, this this is, like, a, a very even game. And, you know, we were talking about this beforehand. And by we, I mean mostly me. Like, I felt like this would, could have been a one-sider. But, no. They're putting up a good fight. We've seen a lot of good Ooh, black Nick. holes as well. And Gremlo is going to be in trouble, but Nick might actually be the one getting turned on here. But instead, Tingle King revealing the Blink oh, Dagger. No. And he actually, they do get two kills in the back lines. Canis Vulpus unable to catch Pingu, though. But the Omni Slash will at least kill off Nick. They want to go for more. The tag team is up and ready. They find the first punch as well as the slow. The He's stun follow blink. up on Bull. He steals the swarm and not Sakuchi. Tingle King able to get out of this one. No punch available for another 28 seconds. Well, and while this is just farming time for Scourge, it was really unfortunate. He actually broke his own, or he started that all off with Ghost Walk, so it was still 17 seconds whenever the uh, the Jug inevitably Omnied him, but I'm surprised Pinko was able to survive there, but so they, they haven't really, neither side has really been able to make these these sweeping plays, and I feel like Arkosh are getting, getting ahead, getting the... Uh, the better end of the deal in a lot of these situations. They're pinging out this mid tower. They still need to take out that objective, but once they do, I mean, then it's just going to be a field day. Their vision's already been incredibly solid for the past, or for the, for the pretty much entirety of the game. I mean, they've known everything that the cut have been up to. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Mo, the game now slowing back down a little bit. Everyone's going back to farming. I keep on checking Gremlo to see if he's doing anything with these uh, with these last two Sages masks. Oh, and they force the TP out. He TP's right back to the tower, though. Maybe he was trying to bait the TP? Jug moves pretty fast. That is true. And that's the thing with these super long cooldowns where you don't want to necessarily use them 
I think they got him. Yeah, got they goat. goat. I was looking at Jug to see if they were going to do anything with that one, but he spins off the cold snap. Yeah, they're just splitting up the map, and neither team necessarily... You want to use your ultimates, right? You want to get them off cooldown if you can get an objective, but... It's found by SMD. Oh, just so much damage. Yeah, I mean, that's the power of the Wraith King now. It's, uh, he got the... Oh, and uh, I think they got Crow. Yep, with no Snowball. Well, they got it now, but it's, uh... There's plenty of team support nearby. He actually gets out of the Keeper Wave just in time, and... And he's quite he's fast. He's got the Essence Ring, actually, so he's got a lot of HP to work with, but... With the Ice Wall down and the Keeper Blast through, Pingu will find the kill, and they're gonna wrap back into mid here. As they see that both Jug and Pale Horse exist in this area, the Ravage is available. Link when they're taking the Wraith King back mid... They don't want to give up this tower as, as long as possible, especially for free. I mean, Gremlo has just seated himself in the bottom lane. You see him circling. They, they want to start playing in the enemy team's jungle. Oh, and if they get Pale Horse. No, nah, they're, they're going to swing a little low. I mean, they're going to get Goat. If, they're, if they want anybody that's going to be real easy, it's going to be Goat. But now... Uh... Oh gosh, they have to get back from it or get back from bot with the tide rotation. Top, you just see little Nick just stalking this Weaver, and it's still a uh, very 50-50 game. We haven't seen the like gigantic two, three, four, five man black hole yet. Of course, we have yet to see the two, three, four, five man. No, we had we've seen a two and a three ravage, but not a four, five. Yeah, and we are just going to wait, and that's why I thought that Lift. the cut were going to put a little bit more pressure on. They throw Reveal Ooh. out onto Pale Horse, and Vol just wants to chase him, but with no follow-up stun available past this lift, he's, he's got nothing going for him there. Now they're going to TP back in the mid. Try to I defend this tier they're one. They're getting it's a very this tower. important tower. Oh. In comes the Ravage, the immediate jump in the EMP, and the Keeper Wave actually confirms it. Was I'm not surprised. expecting to get bursted down like that. Tusk actually does get clipped by the last little bit of the tornado. Yeah, he just didn't think that there was a, a shot that he could just get immediately ravaged. I mean, that was just a, a sick play from Tingo King. He actually just caught him off guard. Yeah. And I'm glad that they're pushing the objective, but I, I wonder if it's slightly late because Gremlo is almost at BKB now. Lift. And then the Enigma is going to be a really scary hero. Goat is... Uh... Yeah, no, no, no saving there. Goat. Oh, oh Pale Horse. On. Nick. He's got a haste rune. Tornado goes through. Oh, and Quicksilver is so broken on Weaver. It's actually just not even fair. I mean, there's a lot of other heroes that use it, but Weaver is definitely one of the nicer ones because, you know, it affects the Geminate as well. SMD is here, though. I'm going to put some pressure on the Pale Horse just to get him out of there. Hit him with that uh, one-shot crit there. It's more so just Skikuchi breaking the movement speed cap already, so you're just an even Rambo. better version of that. This is a good kill. Trouble here. This is a good single man black hole because oh. he knows he's not getting um, out of it. The tide actually blinks in, but there's all enough damage here that it gets cut up a bit here. Uh, Canis Volpus actually coming oh. in. They do manage to find the jump in there, and they will find and this Nick? kill with the Omni Slash while Nick is being picked off on the sidelines by Pale Horse. But Lift is going to be there with the spin, the follow up. The, I mean, the Ghost Scepter not going to save you, and Little Nick goes down with the follow up of a Keeper. Going to go down next. Yeah, and that's a four man wipe. They just poke their heads out a little bit too much, and. The rotations, I mean, two or three heroes were already on their way there, but with how fast this Weaver moves, he just was able to get there and finish off Nick, and they don't really have a great solution to the Weaver. <laughs> oh, you know, I realized that, like, in my mind, I'm like, I wish they would just do all chat lines and stuff, but then I'm, mm. then I remembered that these are all level zero heroes with no Dota Plus on them. You know, I saw six people... Oh. Some tactical drawing, actual drawing. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Well, earlier I saw them just draw. Like, they drew everywhere on the map. Like, maybe 30 seconds ago. And I mean, the, the good news is that Scourge is very farmed. He is working on his BKB now as well. And you still, you don't want to be using your big black hole versus him, but... BKB on Gremlin now, I mean, he's not going to be afraid of this tide anymore. I'm sure Weaver are probably going to be in the same vein sooner or later. And I mean, he's got 288 last hits. He's on par with the Wraith King with the Radiance. And I don't think there's any sign of him slowing down. 
Although Gremlo might be in a very precarious spot here. I think they saw the, the uh, Eidolons for a split second there, and he's actually going to get caught out by Tingle King here. He BKBs immediately. You steal Eidolon. It's not the worst steal. Obviously, like, Midnight Pulse would have been a nice one. But the best part about it is that they get a BKB charge out of it. Yeah, they got his 10 second, and uh, deciding not to die there, it would have probably led to the T1 bottom falling, but it, it, it's not the worst thing, I suppose. Oh, but now, Nick, this is the follow-up. Yeah, they, they, they were like, sick BKB, uh, we'll kill you anyway. Oh, we'll, we'll just stop showing for a few seconds, come look for you. <laughs> oh, I love Easy for Gremlo, indeed. But now, Nick's got to be a little bit careful if he bumps into the tide, but that's the problem. Uh, and I guess it's not too big of a problem, but it really is just the the Tusk making these plays for Arkosh. And they got to catch wind of this Roche. Well, they sunstruck the pit, but with tag team available, and uh, I mean, Candice Wolf was not actually nope, lacking in the damage. they can do. They got it, but the tornado goes through. They still can team fight, and they will do exactly that, but the rest of the team was kind of disengaging for that one. They still healing Ward, healing Ward. all out. Healing Ward's a good steal, but the Omni Slash will go through, annihilating the Rubik before he can even drop it in the first place. SMD turns to go on to Canis. He has Resurrection still available, and his BKB still ready. Meanwhile, Crow will this be picked so off bad. by Pale Horse. I mean, you see Goat throwing his ult out in the corner there. That's the power of the CM, quote-unquote, power as Canis oh. Wolfus gets crit to the face with a 746. The first life has been claimed, and there's no mana on this Weaver. He had a wand, though. He is going to be able to escape for the time being, but he wants to get this kill on little Nick. Oh, Nick. And the bugs actually are staying He's on gonna to him. Go down. guess what? The bug Aghanim shards, pretty good. But SMD turns to go for the Crystal Maid. The BKB is still available if he needs it. He keeps on getting hit with the bull whip, so he is quite slow. But he has the stun He's available, but Canis Wolfus could not get the jump on him. The spin speed, not available. And Tingle King... He's still running. Oh, they're not done yet, though. Vol kind of wants it. He, he blinked they in there. He can't get to him. <gasps> I mean, he's he a very missed. slow boy. Oh, oh, single king. Okay, there we go. Oh, I mean, Pale Horse was going to TP, but, you know, he he's like, oh, free tide, Hunter. Sure. Why not? He didn't He didn't have his, a TP either, so his, uh, his fate was most likely sealed anyway, but... And that's the problem with this shard on the Weaver now. I mean, Nick has no solution. If he gets bugs, he's really in a in a really in hot water. And I mean, that what that wasn't even a fantastic black hole. I think they just black holed Tingle King after the fact while we were watching the uh, the Jug chase Scourge. But I don't. Scourge is so farmed. That that is the shining light of the cut. I don't think any of the cores can really fight up versus him on Arkosh. They really need to be quite patient before they really can kill him. And with Basher coming through, I mean, this Wraith King is only going to get scarier. It's very close with this one. I mean, mm -hmm. do you rush for the Abyssal Blade as SMD? Or do you just stick with straight Basher and you just keep on just clicking on heroes? I think you get the Basher and then you do exactly what he's doing. I, I don't know if you honestly get the Sanjin Yasha, but he needs the AC. He needs his team to have a little bit more armor. Even right now, there's a situation where he'll just die to uh, Omni Slash if uh, Canis Vulpus can save it until until after the reincarnation gets popped. But rather, yeah, oh, he popped a DD. Yeah, he's popping DD. He wants this kill on Tingle King real bad. At least, uh, or even that, a reactionary oh? Ravish, but they will lift them up. They steal Sakuchi. Gucci. They have to be so careful. Nice shards. Stun goes Here we out. Go. Crow will disengage it with a snowball. Healing Ward's going to be thrown out there. The tornado goes through. It is going to find this Tuscar, and he's just straight dead. He big dead boy. Meanwhile, though, the oh, Nigga's just playing adjacent. He's not done. He wants this kill oh. on Tingle, but they drop the Ravage. The disarm's going to be there. Lift's going to follow through, and he's out of there. But he is he's disarmed. He's going to get stunned up. He gets stunned up by SMD, and there goes the crit. 846, and that will confirm the kill. And they're not done yet. Goat is floating. And you do see the keeper. I mean, there's no lift, no stun, no nothing. He didn't have enough. Three seconds, even with the, the extra push from Pingu. When Gremel wasn't even able to accomplish what he was up there. He was trying to get the tier 2 top. He did a lot of damage to it. But I don't know. This Wraith King is starting to kind of fall out of control. Even though they, uh, what they, yeah, they don't have the Aegis anymore. But I, I'm not sure. This is a this is starting to become a problem that they're not dealing with. And he's actually queuing up the Blink Dagger just so he can really hound on that back line. And I mean, this Wraith King is, is doing Wraith King things. I mean, it's 
he's just uncontested. It was the, the radiance at the very beginning of the game. It gives him this continuous free farm, and it's like you're saying, there's nothing they can really do. He's not spiraling out of control, obviously, because we've been seeing a lot of good Omni Slashes go out. By oh, Ball, see Jug. Might be in a bit of problems here. Does have spin TP in three seconds. And will likely do so when and if it comes to that. Yes. With no basher on the tide, that's not going to happen. They do, however, kill the uh, Tusk in their triangle. Yeah, Vol simply just lifted him up while he was farming. And the Arkash players are all farming. That is, that's what they're doing. But they're giving a lot, up a lot of their map when they're getting forced back because they're just not grouping up just yet. Maybe wanting to finish up a few more items, but... Having Scotty on Jug is definitely scary. That's the one item they can kite around the, uh, the Wraith King quite well. Broken on Pale Horse here. They find the first stun to open it up, but SMD actually oh. overextending a little bit. Getting slowed by the Necronomicon Creeper, Defusal Blade, but they are going to force him out. But he's trying his best to get this done, but oh, they will drop hole a Black Nick. Hole, but it was stolen? Black Hole is taken. You have taken. to be so careful. The Omni Slash does go out on the Tingle King, though. They will be able to find this kill. I mean, now we've got... Now, I mean, Vol has the, the strongest tool right now. I'm pretty sure they know about it. They most likely clicked him. I didn't see them ping the ability at all, but... That that entire skirmish happened just because Scourge... I, he tried to kill a healing ward. He walked a little bit too close, and then... I think Nick and Tingle King just got caught up in the crag. I mean, he's got... But now they've got a really strong smoke. Yeah, this is a, a crazy black hole. Yeah, this is gonna hurt. Like, this isn't even Aghanim Scepter, Rubik. Like, this this is going to hurt no matter what scenario it's gonna be in. And there's no, like, there's no resurrection. They don't have the Wraith King. There's no Aegis. That's not gonna be up at least, at, at least for another 2 minutes and 13 seconds. The only unfortunate thing is that they cannot wait for Roche to respawn, try to get a, a smoke play with the black hole, and then try to get that really early Roche on. They will have to, probably whenever Tide is up, just make a play. If they get a pick onto Juggernaut or the Weaver, that would be the best case scenario, but... I don't know, we're, we're kind of playing a waiting game at this point. It looks like he is going to finish the Abyssal Blade on, on Wraith King. Yeah, he probably just wants to, like you see him, he was queuing up the blink, but he probably wants to just get the Abyssal blink, more or less. I mean, it's good for this game because you've got your Lincoln's Breaker and it's been, like, severely, like, reliant. You could see how, you could see how effective, like, everyone else is overall with just breaking this Lincoln Sphere every time. Yep, and they're going to smoke and see the DD. SMD's going to pick it up and it's going to be quite scary. Yeah, because they no know a little bit where they are. There's no reason the uh, the Crystal Maiden would walk over there and get it, and they don't want to like why bait a Crystal Maiden for a DD rune. Oh, goat! SMD. Uh, they there jump in. They find goat. He's just dead. Nothing you can do about that. I mean, this gem is paying off so much for Tingle King. When Arkosh are just splitting the lanes, they're doing exactly what they've been doing, but they haven't been able to translate a lot of this uh, split push map control into objectives. And I mean, the Cub might just go high ground just to force him back. You already see two of the TPs coming out. Yeah, they gotta bring back the Enigma, but. And there's the Alacrity oh, DD. That just tears into the tower. The DD is going to expire at the end of this fortification, however. And now that he has Abyssal Blade, if he's not the one getting Black Hold, he can finally stop it. Kind of suicidally run in. And I hope we see Enigma actually queuing up the, uh, the Ag Shard. Just because you, you pull in. Uh, the Ag Shard is honestly amazing on Enigma. Because even if you don't hit a 3-man Black Hole, it feels like you hit a 3-man Black Hole. Because they just get dragged in after the fact. I think I've seen it once. But it actually wasn't even in like a like a pro series game. I think I saw like a pub game, and it it's actually like you can't underestimate it. Of course, the pull rate's very slow, like the pull rate of 175. But uh, <laughs> it is actually a really good chart for this game because it's the uh, your cores are melee. It also and makes you're... it so difficult if you are trying to do that Blink Abyssal, where if you just get a little bit too close, maybe you're not BKB'd, because, you know, you're Wraith King, you probably want to save that for the next life, but... It actually did happen. It got the early respawn. They've got Black Hole for 15 more seconds. Unfortunately, 15 seconds isn't a long time. They still oh, have they... Ravage to work with, though. They could just Black Hole Roche. They, they are forcing they... it really hard, because, I mean, if they don't come, then they're either fighting into Black Hole or they're fighting into Roche. Are they the actually going to get it? 
It's five seconds on Black Hole. We're Roche not going to see it. at 30%. Black Hole is done. He blinks in. Oh! And he Black Holes the Weaver solo, actually. But the team He's is so far him. away. They can't really do anything with this one, but it bought time, and that's the time that they really needed. However, the Tide will die to Gremlo as a black hole went out from him as well. Gremlo's but the Abyssal Blink is there as SMD is going straight onto Gremlo. The Tide actually buys back. Healing Ward isn't going to save you today, Canis. It's going to find the kill onto Gremlo, and Canis needs to get out of here. SMD gets four stepped up, Superman style. Canis is spinning out of here. Abyssal Blade, but. That was such a good play from Vol. He actually just kept those heroes tied up, allowing Scourge to get it. Wait, they got Old Crow? Snap. Yep, they find Crow, the follow-up stun, and alacrity damage, 1,242 crit. And now they just get to move in on mid. They died a little bit too close to their base. I guess they're going to opt to going for the top tower instead, be a little bit safer with their objectives, but they got everything they wanted there. The Cutter are so happy with that turn of events. Yeah, they still have the Aegis as well. They still have the Cheese. They didn't expend a single thing, and... I mean, sure, you burnt your black hole, but, I mean, it like you said, it had one second on it, and it was, like, the best play they could have done with it. Well, and even though Tingle King did die and buy back, he still has Ravage. They don't have black hole for another minute. I mean, if Scourge wanted to, they can really press the issue here. I mean, you can see them. They're lining up. Their Skelebros are here, and they're bringing in, I believe, the Invoker. Yes. And this is the power of the Coddle. You get to play in so many lanes at the same time. And, I mean, Coddle has a Hex. He's so farmed. Same with Nick. They've got double Hex. It's so hard for Arkosh to get into these fights now. And I don't think they can stop this. It's a crazy game when your Rubik is uh, severely farmed. It's like the Ags, Canis, Wolfus jump will be in there, but the Abyssal Blade jump will be the response. Oh, they're they watching the Hexes. They have the first life. They have the Ravage that goes out, but the BKB is there from Enigma, but he's got 37 seconds until Black Hole's available, but Crystal Maiden Jeez. is putting a lot of damage here, but SMD just doesn't care. They find the kill in Canis, Vulpus. No buyback available. They're getting ratted, though. Back. Yeah, they, they are get getting pale ratted. Horse. They trade tower for tower, but not kill for kill. But this is the power of Caudal. They TP one hero back, they force the Weaver to give up all of the pressure, and now they're just going to recall him as soon as it's up. Grimlow jumping in gets the stun, but seven seconds until Black Hole. They can't get this initiation just quite yet. But you're right, I can't now believe that Weaver's they kept not there, up. they could just kind of reset, and once the wave's all done, they'll just go straight for mid, because SMD, he still has Aegis, and his life has been reset. And I can't believe they kept BSJ or up. Uh, Cam's Wolf is uh, kept up or locked down for so long. The double hex ravage. Again, they just didn't expect that fast jump, and it's all up to Tingle King. Tingle King just played it so perfectly, and I mean, they're just using nothing. They're using nothing and gaining everything, and now it feels like Arkosh's back is against the wall. Oh, Spell Prism. That's actually huge. I'm gonna get this yeah, ravage up is... quicker. I mean, it's still oh, goat. 75 seconds. Goat. He's gonna be in trouble here. The Abyssal Blink is gonna find the jump, but... Watch Pale Horse, right there. Oh Pale no! Horse. In the back lines, he's actually trying to go for a singular pick, but he gets hexed up, and he's just straight dead. The Keeper waved the finish. And SMD, still in the base. They've been whacking into him, but with no gain. They didn't kill him. First life still just, available, the Swift Blink. Giving him so much space. He just got pulled apart. I mean, it was literally Scourge McDuck 1v3ing the other heroes, just almost pretending to kill the CM. And this double hex, he doesn't have BKB, he got greedy yet again on the Weaver, and he's paying for it. You can see how just unfazed SMD is by this. Jumping, oh, big! They do have the good black hole, in fact, but the Rubik stole it! He's hanging on the outlines, he still has his, and he will find the return, but he will get stunned up immediately. SMD is still getting clicked on by this Juggernaut in the back lines, he still has one life available. But the rest of his team can't really rotate in to help him in any scenario. He's got Omni. He has to walk out. Omni is available, but there is a Ravage in 10. They want to be able to split it. And it goes to the Creeps and jumps to Tingle King. And it looks like it's going to matter that Tingle King will go down. But SMD finds at least one trade. And he needs to get out of here. The buyback five. comes from the Tusk. They need, a, they need to disengage as soon as possible. But SMD, he's dead. Pingu, he's going to be next to follow as well. Ghost Scepter not going to save him today. And the Cut lose all of their heroes, but they force multiple buybacks but it's still at the end of the day you lost all your cores yeah and i think vol just he blew the whistle a little bit too early if he was able to get out use that black hole a little bit more effectively i think he just got he i think remlo simply malficed him after it and i mean we've got got the mini map covered but 
he just wasn't able to find that big black hole and they just used a little bit too much nick fell to i think it was the uh the buyback on weaver or no i think he just got he just got hosed down oh just looking at the net worth graph with this uh most recent transaction of events it is shifting back down it looks like it's actually back into arkosh's favor only slightly but it is there and that's something that you need to worry about if the the game does continue to to bleed on is just that jug is going to continue to be this very scary hero he doesn't he's not even slotted yet he still has that agate and scepter slotted in and i mean 40 minutes into the game they're finally getting their tier four items i did actually see for a split second that uh not only did jug buy ags actually he bought the uh the blade fury shard and i and I, it's it's so good i saw it actually in action I'm like severely. Oh, they find the uh, spell prism for Enigma as well. The CDR is real. They've got the uh, the personal smoke ninja gear, uh, spell prism, and then, I mean, I imagine again eventually we will see the, the shard. I mean, the shard is still really good in this game. I mean, now you have to be a little bit scared if you're the cut after that wipe. I mean, you are two racks ahead. But they're not the most important racks. The the furthest lane from Roshan is usually the most important one to get. But still, they're very confident. And now Weaver finally getting that BKB. And once Weaver has BKB, he's going to be that really annoying hero that we know Weaver to be. He's mm -hmm. just always going to be running at your backline. With the 25 as well, that, that's almost a 900 movement speed Weaver. With a casual Minotaur on top of all that. I do want to point out that the cut did smoke up. They were trying to go for a specific uh, pick there, but they just can't quite get it. The mobility of Arkosh is is very prominent. They're just so fast. They're just in and out constantly. And oh, they return the counter smoke, smoke. though. Pales, of course, he does Pale? jump in with the BKB, but the Abyssal Blade Blink is going to be there. Oh, but he's the going black to hole? Up immediately. The black hole is there. They find two, but the Rubik is on the outside. Where is he? Where is the Rubik? Does Rubik manage to get it. in there just in time, but he didn't manage to steal it. He gets it off, but it just doesn't get anywhere. The Ravage is going out, but it doesn't get anything with that damage. Tinkle King eventually goes down ever so slowly, and they expend the first life of SMT. Nick's they will back. get this return kill, but they're just... Oh, wait, oh, wait Weaver. Weaver, he gets bashed with the follow-up stun. The Hex is there, actually. That's this can turn around immediately. This is dieback for him indeed, SMD. They want to turn around. They get the follow-up stun. The Abyssal Blade, continual bash, and... You see the Rubik spinning in there. It's a rampage, rampage for SMD and Arkosh. And that's it. We'll throw out GG. the GG. The, none of the cores have buybacks. SMD is like, I'm running down mid. This is game. <laughs> and Vol does it again. He's able to get that black hole stolen. He didn't even get his second black hole off on the Enigma because he died so fast. It was almost picture perfect for Gremlo. He kept the two. He kept. He forced Nick to die. He got him on dieback, but. Nick was just there. The hexes were a little bit too strong. And it all goes back to this Weaver's decision to greed out for not getting that BKB. If he has BKB there, he doesn't need to worry about these hexes. But as soon as he gets it popped, I think it was just by a fade bolt. He gets lifted, he gets hexed up, and then he needs to be incredibly terrified of the double hex coming out. And Pingu is the most farmed coddle I've seen in a very long time. He was just orchestrating that fight beautifully, and then there's just nothing they could do. It felt like, I really felt like they were going to, to 2v8 in that game. The, the Canis Vulpus Pale Horse combo, but the farm just didn't matter versus Scourge. The Wraith King prevailed. Well, with that being said, though, ladies and gentlemen, it is still a best of two. Crap. <laughs> it is still a two-game series. Arkosh, they, they did really well. And like you were saying, there was, there was very specific points at which the game was kind of theirs and i don't know their, their team fights were just kind of everywhere but when well, um, it kind of goes back to wraith king you just had you have one extremely farmed core versus two sort of farmed cores and he was just it just way too strong well with that being said ladies and gentlemen there is another game around the corner as you can see we already are in the lobby in our chat so Stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. Game two of the cut versus Arkosh is right around the corner.